bank on houses and issues and what's going on and how and why. Yeah. So bank on houses, you probably should always at least have either a home inspector or a mold inspector inspect it, right? A, a lot of the bank on stock. We're smaller, you know, under 2,000 square feet, bungalow type things. Rarely did you see one of the major big box, although I've seen a few of them, um, get into that kind of condition. Uh, surprisingly enough, I do very few of the big boxes, though. They get some general contractor in there who tells them he can handle everything. And of course, the jack of all trades. Right. And they tear the drywall out and throw a little bleach on the wall and they and they say grace over it. And, and uh, because they're buying this big box house and they want to make it all beautiful again, but they really don't address any of the indoor air quality issues. We basically touch every surface in the house. When we, we buy a wipe, HEPAVAC for all the all the dust and, and, and all of the, uh, the cobwebs, etc. Well, fiberglass, mold, and what about lead? Lead too. Well, Older houses, sure. the lead dust. Well, yeah. If you do, if you do uh, any removal at all, you're covered under the R R P or what is R P? E R P. So you you e have to do that as well. But we have a vacuum and bio wipe every surface because also, what's not seen on all those walls, and they think, well, gee. That wall looks fine. There's nothing there. Well, there's a biofilm there. And you have to wipe that biofilm as well. Because that biofilm contains contaminants. But we do it. And so that's why they say, well, why can't you do it to that spot? Well, no. It's all contaminated. So you bio-wipe and half of that, do the ducts, treat them all, bing. It's done. It works. It's fine. Nobody gets sick about bank on houses and I want to really make that this point. Most of them are, are prior to 78. So they have clay tail systems. Have what? Clay, clay tile. tile. Oh, sure. And so no, no one remembers to check that clay tail system. Does the drain tile? Yes. Around the perimeter. Right. No one remembers to it's check usually. that system and make sure that it's running right. And then they all run in and thinking they're getting a great deal. And oops, six months later, they're calling waterproofer for, for a $20,000 whack. Well, yeah, because they're plucked. For the tree, yeah. the front of the yard. Or so the we recommend to everyone, spend that little extra money to camera your drain and, mm -hmm. and water jet the thing and make sure that it's running right so that you don't get a very nasty surprise six months down the road. Well, they're always painted, right? When you buy them, they're all nice white. Right. You can't. Uh, I'd like to revisit something you said earlier about an existing home that's been upgraded or weatherized, and weatherized is basically addressing the issues that will save energy, and there's a safety component, and that is a major blower door for combustion. Does it still vent water heater? Does the furnace still vent after you've insulated the attic, sealed the, the you know the, the uh, in uh, recess lighting, done your sill boxes? Because now you've got a whole different dynamic as far as air pressure zones in the house, and you could therefore have caused the water heater the to not fumes. vent ever. Right. It'll just dump into the basement, and you got tons of water. Right, and. Uh, when we weatherize a house, I don't do that anymore. We will put the door on it because if we start off with, for example, 3,000 CFM leakage and our target is 1,500 in order to satisfy 92.2, and we test it at 1,500, we have to do what uh, is called a uh, combustion zone yeah. testing. And there, you have all the exhaust fans on, take the filter out of the dryer vent, turn it on, kitchen exhaust to the outside, you turn it on, then you do the combustion testing. And if it doesn't test, you gotta fix it. 
because those old chimneys, we, we know that a subdivision with a thousand houses, 90% of the chimneys were compromised before they were ever even used. The joints don't line up, the uh, mortar isn't there, they're like this, and uh, it takes a lot of heat to make that chimney work, but to heat up the tile, which means you may have to go in and put a, a chimney liner in for that furnace and water heater because they won't vent it anymore because you got the house too tight. So that's, so the, probably that's the stack effect. Not stack effect. Um, stack effect is when the... How do you rise it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about when the water heater is on, they generally dump into the basement for the first couple of minutes anyway. I mean, if you put a, a fire up there, it'll go out. Or smoke. The draft of the water heater yeah. is poor. The draft could be such that the chimney no longer gets warm enough to, to rise up. Rise. In other words, it'll go about this side. You can actually look down with a flashlight and see a cloud. And the cloud is more more or less like the uh, fireplace plug. So the, the heat is going to come out and down the draft of river into the basin. You know, that's interesting because... These older homes, people are buying the high-efficient condensing furnaces. These are the furnaces that have the white pipes that go out to the side, and they no longer connect them to the chimneys, but the water heater is still draft, natural draft. It still goes up. Mm -hmm. So they lost that heat mm -hmm. from the fireplace or from the furnace, mm -hmm. and so then you have poor draft. <clears throat> Most codes say you will put a liner in if you do that. If a you, liner, if a flu liner. If you put a 90-plus furnace... You will put a liner in for the water here. You have to. Because it won't work. So if, so if your furnace guy sells you a high efficient furnace, he better be telling you to put in a flue liner for your water heater because he may be causing a whole other set of problems. Yeah, he could be out of business real soon. Government asset. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it should be tested. And that would be where you would do a, a drill a hole and, and your guy would put a combustion analyzer on your furnace and your water heater and test a draft. Not necessarily. Um, if it's drafting, we don't particularly care what the temperature is and uh, you know the, the pressure that's in there. We just want to make sure there's nothing coming out of the draft diverter. Mm -hmm. Okay. To do a combustion analysis, yes, you have to drill the hole and so on. But a, a draft gauge, a draft gauge isn't is is a, I've seen guys use them. They're like forty bucks, but. You you want to have I, I think I think the draft you want to have on the water heaters, uh, the way they call it is 0 .01, 0 .01 or, to 0 .02 yeah. water inch columns. Mm -hmm. So I heard that if if let's say you had too much draft, that's a problem too because the water heater can't compete with that air getting sucked up from the basement. Let's say you had too much uh, positive pressure in your basement, and then it, it can spill back down and that's why you have the black stains on the bottom of the water here's you know the rust stains on the bottoms and the rust mm -hmm. stains on the top that's a bad thing that's carbon monoxide well we're getting too much air uh, to the fuel mixture rate because we're just bringing so much air across the burner because it's being drawn in the chimney and that's all that is and that in other words you got a blowtorch going rather than a nice blue flame <laughs> as opposed to the carbon monoxide flame, which is orange and wavy. Mm -hmm. And and I, I guess to, to conclude on this, if you have a water heater and somebody installs a water heater, repairs a water heater, they need to test the draft and the combustion. Mm -hmm. If they put in a furnace, they need to test the draft, the combustion, and make sure they didn't screw up anything else by changing the house anatomy, right? Because the old furnace... Bing. Jimmy, that's what happens. Okay. These new energy people will buy these high fission <laughs> units they have the they have a chimney where the old furnace used to use a chimney and now they're not using it anymore because they got the white pipes condensing going out right. the sides. They just change the whole house around, and so you have to know what you're doing. So your heating guy better know what he's doing. Your water heater guy better know what he's doing. Mm -hmm. It sounds like the your your blower your your energy star guy better know what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Your your mold. Uh, and building science and, and, and indoor air guy better know what he's doing, and your home inspector better know what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey. Is that good? Yeah, a lot of take. Don't. That's a take. That's a take. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. You've, uh, this is uh, one of our first episodes of Mold, Indoor Air, and House Talk with uh, Marco Volk. Jim Roby. Tom Jones. Thank you, Marco. <laughs> Thank you.
All right.